Welcome to August Lico Challenge. Today's problem is set matrix zeros. Given an m times n integer matrix, if an element is zero, set its entire row and column to zeros and return the matrix. You must do it in place. So that's kind of big because we can't generate a new temporary or can't generate a new matrix and then return that. We want to update the original matrix. So they give you a bunch of hints, and I've seen this problem before. So let's see if I can do this through memory. The basic idea is what we'll do is use the first row and first column to track whether there's zeros inside of our matrix. Now, the reason for that is if we did some sort of like recursive solution, the problem is it, whenever we update the entire row and column, that's going to make it later on when we see that the cell is zero, we're going to update things like in two steps, right? And we only want to update it if it's zeros here. For instance, if we update zero, like, and we come here and we update all these rows, the thing is if we meet this next column, since this is set to zero, we're going to update these as well. And we don't want to do that, right? We only want to set the zeros for the first row and first column once. So what we'll do is use that information, whether there's a zero inside of the row or column, uh, mark it in the first row here, and mark it in the first column. So what I mean is, we'll move through, skipping the first row and first column to see if any of these are zeros. If they are, we're gonna mark the first row uh, column as zero, and we're gonna mark the uh, first column row as zero here. So these will be set to zero. And later on, we can move through and set all these rows and columns to zero. Uh, but one thing that's gonna be a little bit different is if the zero is inside the first row and first column, that changes things because we don't want to set everything to zero because we have important information here, right? If we set everything to zero, then we're going to set all the rows and columns to zero. So what we'll do instead, have a Boolean to mark whether the first row and first column is zero and do that at the very end. Like if there's a zero inside of the first row or the first column, later on, after we do all our updates, then we'll just update the first column and first row all as zeros. All right, so let's begin. Let's set our uh, M and N first. I should say n and m, and this will be the length of matrix 0, and this will be the length of matrix. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a Boolean for the first row and first column. We'll set these to false at first, and we're going to check to see if any, there's any zeros inside the first row, and if there's any zeros inside the first column. So we'll say for column, or say for row in range of, let's see, uh, m. Um, if matrix row, oh, so row and then zero, this would mean the first column has a zero, right? So if any of these equals zero, then first column equals true. And we'll do the same thing here, uh, but for the columns instead to mark the first row. So for column in range of n, if matrix zero C is equal to zero, then the first row is set to true. All right, now we're gonna mark our first column and first row with information for all the other cells within. So we'll say for R in range of one through M and for column in range of one through N. If matrix R C is equal to zero, then let's mark our uh, matrix of, let's see, zero C. This will be set to zero and matrix of R zero is also set to zero. Now let's just move through and set all our uh, rows and columns correctly. So we'll have to do this in two steps. We'll say four row in range of one through M. So if, See if matrix R zero is equal to zero, then we're gonna move through all the columns and set those to zero, okay? So for uh, C in range of one through N, let's mark everything as zero. Let's see. Row C equals zero. And we'll do the same thing here for column and range of one through n. If matrix zero C 
is equal to zero, then we'll set every, all the all the rows in here, range of one to m, also to zero. C R C equals zero. Finally, uh, the first row and first column. If first row is set to true, then we want to set the entire first row to true. Okay, so for column in range of we want everything here. So for n, I will set matrix C. First row, first column. All equal to zero here. Let's clean that up a little bit. And we'll do the same thing for the first column. The first column for all the rows in range to M matrix R0 all set to zero. And finally, we don't need to return anything then, right? Because we've modified the original matrix itself. So let's see if this works. All right, that looks like it's working. Nope, uh, let's see, I didn't get this one. No one, why didn't that happen? Oh, okay, my mistake, this should be C. So let's see here. All right, that looks like it's spring, so let's go ahead and submit that. And accepted, phew, I, I thought I didn't get that. So this would be time complexity n times m, and we use constant space, right? So yeah, I mean, I've seen this problem before. I'm glad I could still solve it. And really, I don't really know what else there is to add. I don't, I'm not even sure if this is a video I should upload because I've already done it, but uh, uh, whatever, since I've already done it, I'll probably put it up. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Uh, remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.